Good morning, everybody. We're live here from the birdhouse. It is early September, and we have for you an update about the different birds that are flowing through the upstate New York area. We've got some of your photos to share that you sent in. And as always, we love to know who's on. You can say hello in the comments. If you have any sightings, absolutely put those in there. Or if you have questions also, you can throw those in the comments. We will get started here we are starting to see some fall migration and that will just keep on going as the season goes and goes and as we go into september and move through september we'll start to see some new and different things coming through and then we'll start to see some more of that waterfowl migration too which is always really fun so um first of all hummingbirds people have been getting hummingbirds we will have hummingbirds here in the upstate new york area through september pretty regularly um even into early november people get them so don't be surprised if you are seeing hummingbirds, even more hummingbirds than you have been all year long because they are gearing up for migration. They're refueling. Um, we are having hummingbirds come down here from further up north. So there's been quite a bit of hummingbird activity, including um, we've got some photos here that were sent in by Mark of some hummingbirds that he was having in his yard. So yeah, hummingbirds will be here throughout the whole month. Orioles will start to see them taper off quite a bit, but same idea. They are here through the month of September, um, especially early September, and then they'll start to kind of drop off as the month goes on. But hummingbirds should be strong pretty much all month long. So keep those feeders full and uh, water those flowers so they bloom enough for the hummingbirds because they'll be around quite a bit. Um, but we've got lots of photos here that were sent in by Bob who has been getting some really good migration through his yard. And I love these photos that he sent in because it's showing a lot of the warblers and how they look in the fall as compared to how they do how they look in the spring in the spring a lot of them are super brightly colored but in the winter months and in the summer um, they're going to be not as brightly colored so they can be more difficult to identify uh, but bob says many of these photos are either females or immature birds there is one with a photo bomb from a ruby-throated hummingbird along with an american red start female I think there are a Tennessee warbler, maybe a black Burnian warbler, Cape May warbler, scarlet tanager, magnolia warbler, rose-breasted grosbeak, chestnut-sided warbler, common yellow throat, all female, male American red star, and a Canada warbler that I originally thought was a Nashville warbler, but that has a bit of yellow between the eye and bill. I think a young toey is in there as well with a red-eyed vireo and also a warbling vireo, black bell cuckoo, which took me completely by surprise, least flycatcher, eastern phoebe, and oriole. So he's had quite a good amount of um, migration coming through um, his yard. And this is the black Bernian warbler here. And the male in the spring is bright, bright orange and black and white. So you can see it looks quite a bit different than you would see in spring for the warblers. But this is the black Bernian warbler. And then there is the common yellow throat and the ruby throated hummingbird. So He's been getting ruby-throated hummingbird as well. Uh, let's see, this is the magnolia warbler. So again, looks very different than you might see in the springtime. Um, this is actually, oops, I, I mislabeled this. This is the Eastern Phoebe type of flycatcher. Another bird that we have here in the spring and summer months that we'll have through, through this month in their making their way back down south uh, for the winter months so we'll have them around for a little bit longer this is the red-eyed vireo which you can still hear calling from the uh from the treetops all winter long or i'm sorry all summer long and they're going to be going back down south for the winter as well uh here is the chestnut sided warbler Again, looking different than you would see the males in the spring months. Scarlet tanager, but the scarlet tanager still has that black wing, so you can identify it pretty easily here. So really neat sighting there of a scarlet tanager. 
Here's the Eastern Toey. Keep your eye out um, underneath your feeders for Eastern Toey. They will come to feeders sometimes, and especially underneath feeders, they'll eat sunflower seeds. Um, sometimes they'll eat millet and safflower and things like that. So you might just happen to see Eastern Toey. Here's that least fly catcher, another fly catcher species that'll be around for a little bit longer. Uh, the Tennessee Warbler, an American Red Start. This is the male. You can see the color is quite a bit brighter than this next one, which you can see kind of in the, the corner here over to the right is the female or immature American Red Start. And here's the rose-breasted grosbeak, another bird you might happen to see at your feeders this time of the year, especially as they're getting ready to go back down south for the, the winter. Um, they will come to the same kind of feeders as the cardinals do. They're in the same kind of family as the cardinals. They've got that big beak that will crack open black oil sunflower or safflower. They'll eat sunflower hearts. So uh, keep your eye out at your feeders for something like this rose-breasted grosbeak. Um, warbling vireo. So we saw the red-eyed vireo, also warbling vireo are around. Um, Black-billed cuckoo. There's this one. We've got the black-billed cuckoo. Locally, we also have what's called the yellow-billed cuckoo, but this is the black build it does have a black bill and it's darker in color. The yellow billed cuckoo will have more white on its tail feathers is one way that you can identify the two, one way you can tell the difference between the two. And Orioles, so there will be still some Oriole activity throughout the month, especially early in the month. And Bob caught this picture of the Oriole and Cape May Warbler as well. So lots of fun birds. You never know what you're going to see. These photos were sent in a couple weeks ago by Mark J, who caught this picture of a swallowtail kite that was passing through. So you just never know what you might see uh, during migration time. So this was over at Ellison Park. A swallowtail kite, very rare visitor here. And he sent in this photo also of the least bittern that was seen over at Montezuma. So that's in that heron family. You can usually find them slinking through cattails. So look around marshes and ponds for things like the least bittern. And the garden is full of all kinds of creatures right now. Lots of insects out there. We've been getting a lot of calls about lots of bees, lots of yellow jackets. It is that time of the year. Um, you also will probably see a lot of spiders out there like orb weavers or the zipper spider that Karen sent in a picture of in her backyard. If you're having issues with bees and wasps coming to your hummingbird feeders or your oriole feeders, it can be kind of difficult to keep them away. One thing you can do though, if, you, if your feeder doesn't have a place for bee or wasp guards on it, is you can make a really, really sugary solution and put it somewhere further away from your feeders. So the bees and wasps will go to that instead of your bird feeder. So whereas, for example, hummingbird nectar has a recipe of one part sugar to four parts water, you can make something that's more of a one to one ratio so it's super, super sweet. And the bees and wasps will tend to go to that instead of your feeders. You could just put it in a little bowl or plate uh, on the ground somewhere further away from your feeders and they'll find it. Some things to look for as we're getting into migration season. Rusty blackbird will be passing through. Look for them in groups. Like you can find them in mixed flocks sometimes of other blackbirds like red winged blackbirds or brown headed cowbirds. Um, so this is the rusty blackbird. Um, this is the hermit thrush, which will also be coming through more over the next couple of months. And you can tell the hermit thrush because they do have more of a chestnut color on their tail than some of the other thrush species. It's kind of like a reddish type of color. Ruby crown kinglet people will start to be reporting more and more too. They're very small. They bounce around in trees and in bushes like the warblers do. And they do have that ruby crown on the top of their head, which is sometimes displayed, sometimes not. So they can be a little bit tough to identify unless they have that ruby crown flaring, but they will be seen more often within the next couple weeks as well. And then brown creeper, which you can find creeping up the trees. They blend in really well 
with the bark of the trees. And we'll be hearing more and more reports of those um, during the next few weeks. White-throated sparrow, another bird to be on the lookout for underneath their feeders, uh, especially they will come to feeders, especially if you have a big platform feeder or a hopper feeder that has a lot of perching room, but they'll also feed underneath feeders pretty often. They have that white patch on their throat and usually a little yellow patch in between their eye and bill, which is pretty distinctive. So white-throated sparrow, we'll start seeing more of, and dark-eyed junco, a sign of the cooler months to come, will start flowing in in more numbers. Again, a bird to look for underneath your feeders in general. They're gray with a pink bill, white belly, and hop around on the ground uh, is where you can typically find them. If you're by water, we've got lots of great egret that are flying through on their migration back down south, especially along the river, you can find them. Um, lots of great blue heron, lots of green heron, but then also great egret. And we'll start to see flocks of snow geese flying overhead too. So if you see some geese up, up in the air, take a second look because they might not be Canada goose, they might be snow goose flying through. And as we get into the month of September, we'll have more and different waterfowl coming through as well. Um, this bird is called the redhead. It has a, a very reddish colored head, kind of like a chestnut red. And it has a blue bill that's tipped in black. Ring neck duck, we'll start to hear more reports of greater and lesser scalp. And red breasted merganser are some that haven't that aren't as common here in the spring and summer months that we'll start to see more of come the fall, including white winged scoter, which will be here all winter long. So, and then finally, also, you wanna be on the lookout for monarch butterflies. We're getting to be in right around in that peak season of monarch migration. So it's usually around the 11th or so. So we're about a week away from peak, peak migration, but monarch butterflies are flying through the area and we will have Typically, when we have the most migration is around uh, September 11th, around that date, at least here in the Rochester area. So monarchs are flowing through on their migration back down south to Mexico. And when they do that, sometimes you can be lucky enough to see a group of them like this all clump up together on the branch of a tree where they'll roost for the night only to continue on their migration in the morning. So just some things to be out uh, to be out on the lookout for. If you are in the Rochester area, we do have our photo contest, which is going on right now. It is for eight by 10 photos of birds, wildlife, scenery. We have multiple categories, including a youth category, a pet category. You can get more information about that, including the prizes that we give away at thebirdhouseny.com. And it is completely free to enter. You can always send your photos in if you decide to. So we definitely have that going on, which is a lot of fun. We also have Wild Wings Birds, Birds of Prey coming in this weekend too, this Saturday from 11 to 1. We'll have live Birds of Prey here at the store. So we've got a few things going on. Um, throughout the rest of the year and we've got more and more events that we are continuing to plan so keep an eye out on our event list online on Facebook um, to see what we've got going on so we've got a couple of comments here uh, that bald old guy says how come you don't make videos anymore I'd be able I would be able to sit down and watch one at home easier than here at work yes we've got a whole bunch of other videos that we are um, planning out things about attracting different birds attracting bats bugs all kinds of fun stuff um, you can always watch these videos while, while not live you can see them at any time on our youtube channel they are up there once we um, once after we go live they go right up onto youtube and on facebook too so you can watch them at any time at your convenience um, Steel Monkey is on, says, hello, Liz. All my Orioles have left here on Cape Cod, but I still have plenty of hummingbirds. I've noticed one always chases the others away from the feeder. I didn't realize they were so territorial. They are very, very territorial. They're even known to chase off other larger birds like blue jays or cardinals. Um, so the key to getting a whole bunch of hummingbirds if you're trying to attract more or offer them more food is to have multiple feeders in locations where they can't see one another because yes, they are super, super territorial and they are known to defend 
their food source, which it sounds like you might have going on there at your place. So fun behavior there that you can see from hummingbirds. So it looks like that's everybody's questions and comments for the day. We'll be back on Saturday with another broadcast. And until then, have a great week. And